Hey guys, so since there's been a few competitive events in the last couple of weeks, such as the remote YCS for North America and Europe, and the recent LCS 3v3, I thought I'd take a look at the most played hand traps and staples among the topping lists as usual, so if you want to see more content like this, then make sure to subscribe. Now of course, you guys have probably seen these visuals by now, but this was the breakdown of the European remote deal YCS, courtesy of Raid and Trade Gaming, with most topping decks being Sword Soul and their list Tri Brigade, also known as Bird Up. Now fortunately, all 32 of the topping lists for this event were made publicly available, which we can't say the same for the other two events that I'll get to shortly. As for the most recent LCS 17, which was a 3v3 team event, you see a lot of Sword Soul and Bird Up again, but this time Dogmatica Invoke DPE was the most represented. Now the top cut list for this event were not all available, and from what I read, it looks like they will be released after YCS Pasadena, so I could only get my hands on a small few topping lists that were posted publicly. Lastly, for the North American Remote YCS, I did not see an official visual breakdown, so I just made my own, based on the information compiled by Jeebus McAsian, Lundra D, and their friends, where Jeebus shared the post on Reddit, so thanks to him as usual. For the NAYCS, again, the top three decks are the same, with Sword Soul having a lot of representation, but at least we saw a bunch of rogue decks make it to top cut as well. Now, the NAYCS is still ongoing for the top 16, so their lists are not available, and unfortunately, most of the topping lists that lost in their first round of top cut were not available either. So if we look at the topping deck list contributed for the analysis in this video, while we do have all 32 lists available from the European event, you see that we only have 5 topping lists from the NAYCS and the recent LCS event. In terms of which lists were actually available, so from the NAYCS I was able to include the Grim Maju, Mech Knight, B Trooper, Invoke DP, and the Sword Soul list. Now keep in mind that this means most of the NA lists were rogue decks that were included for this video. As for the recent LCS event, we had two of Bird Up, Tri Brigade Melfi, Dogmatica Eldritch, as well as another B Trooper list included. So overall, this means that the numbers in this video predominantly represent the European topping lists. Now overall, the number of hand traps in the main among the topping lists included range from a crazy 0 to 21 cards, where that 60 card B Trooper list actually main deck 21 hand traps. The median was 8 hand traps, which is higher than the 6 cards we saw in the last pack LCS event. As for the hand traps in the side, pretty much aligned with what we're used to seeing, with a range of 0 to 9 and a median of 6 hand traps in the side. As for board break cards, which can include anything from monster negation like droplets or dark ruler, to back removal like cosmic cyclone or lightning storm, or to any kind of one for one removal like pankertops or kaijus, this ranged from 0 to 7 in the main, and surprisingly, the median in the main was 3 cards, whereas usually the median number is 0 for the main. I think a lot of players are gravitating towards board break cards, particularly main decking some of them even if their deck wants to go first since you do need a contingency plan if you lose the die roll. In the side, the number of board break cards range from 0 to 10 with a median of 5.5 cards, which is the typical number that I see when I do these analysis. So now let's cover the top 10 most played hand traps and staples as usual. At number 1 is actually Infinite Impermanence, very versatile hand trap and can be used going first or second. And it's just been really popular for the last few formats now, with most lists main decking this card. Next up is Nibiru, where it's good against combo decks in general, even though the top decks will play around it or through it, but you can't deny its impact on keeping decks in check. And then we have Droll coming in at third, where about one third main deck this card, which can be really good against Bird Up, although not so great against Sword Soul, great against Drytron as well, and I personally am trying to main deck this as well because it's a high impact card. Next we have Ash, where in the pack LCS this fell to fifth whereas typically it's always number 1. Its impact has definitely fallen lately, but because of Fusion Destiny and DPE being so popular, Ash does have a good role in trying to stop that. If you played it, it was only main deck though, so something worth noting. And then we have DD Crow, which of course largely is because Bird Up and any Tri Brigade list is probably playing this card because it's searchable for them. But even outside of these decks, this card is seeing some play, and I have started to test it out as well, and it's pretty great, especially with decks like Sky Striker being so popular again. Next we have Effect Failure, another monster negation that's quite popular. This was followed by Artifact Lancia where there may not be some clear tier 1 deck where it, this is absolutely required like it was back in the days where Dinos or Virtual World were tier 1, but it can still have at least some impact against a lot of decks, and with Scythe and Sanctum seeing more play, this can be useful when paired with something like Sanctum or even Dagda. Next we have Gamma which seems to have fallen off a bit in popularity since the last LCS event, although still a really good hand trap to have in your list in this format. And then we have Token Collector which is basically only good against Sword Soul and was only played in the side in the 9 list. 
We also have Ghost Spell at 10th, which at one point was a really popular hand trap when Drytron and Pure Tri Brigade were the clear top decks, but it did fall off the last couple of months. Now let's move on to the most played staples. First, we have Cosmic Cyclone. Being a quick play is really important right now with Imperial Order being rampant, but Cyclone can also deal with the Sight Block that's happening a lot lately. Next, we have Forbidden Droplet. This card's really expensive for a reason, and the card has just been really nuts since release and is now starting to see more play in the format than before. Now speaking of Imperial Order, this was also tied for the second most played staple among the topping lists included in this video. Just an unfair card that a lot of players are clamoring to get it banned on the upcoming list, and you can watch my most recent ban list prediction survey results video to see how much of the community predict this card to be banned in January. Next we have Call by the Grey, pretty standard to see this as one of the most played staples. What you don't see often though is Krausaw Designator, the card kinda flopped. Tied for 4th is yet another back removal card in Harpy's Feather Duster. Despite being unbanned a while back, nowadays it's not really a given that Liss will play this card despite it being so strong. Speaking of back row hate, we have perhaps the most powerful of them all in Red Reboot being played only in the side if played at all. Some have asked for this card to be banned as well, although I personally really want this to stay at at least at 1. I certainly miss it at 3 but I know that's just not fair at that amount. And then we have more back row hate in Lightning Storm and Twin Twisters. Lightning Storm is pretty popular right now and it has a bit more versatility since it can destroy attack position monsters as well, although a lot of players typically play around it by putting their monsters that can negate in defense mode. And then we have Mystic Mind, yet another card that a lot of players have been wanting banned for a while. Since Sky Striker is popular again, it's not surprising to see this card up here, but other lists are playing it as well like Dogmatica Invoked or Mech Knights. Lastly, another going second card that's been popular in the current format is Evenly Match, a card that declined to play after Lightning Storm was released. While you do have to give up your battle phase, the card is very strong and, well, evens out the field and looks like a lot of players are still on this. Now while it did not make the top 10, I did notice Dimensional Barrier was another popular staple played in the topping list and it's a card that you can only really stop with Red Reboot so it definitely is very strong and worth consideration in your main or side deck. Alright guys, so that was it for the top card hand trap and staple breakdown of the YCS and LCS events. Hope you found that useful. There will be the top 16 of the NA Remote YCS as well as YCS Pasadena in January, so let's see if any of these trends and card choices continue. Take care guys.